to show you. <laughs> right. I'm Jill DeColomino, and we're going to show you how to make brajol and a nice marinara sauce and some cookies. What do you call them, Jean? Oh, those are uh, anisette twists. But twist. we got chicle bread. What do you see we're making? Peas, potatoes, and onions are, pe are peasant dish, but we have guests, and I want to introduce you to our guests right here. Okay, this is these are our friends. So this is Sandra. Say hi, Sandra. Hi, hi Sandra. Hi. And Joan, Silva, and my very best friend, Anna Drum. Hello there. Okay. okay. They're going to be here tonight, and after they see our show, we're going to all eat together. We're going to have a great time. Okay? And delicious food. Oh, oh I know. Delicious. How many of you out there know what chicle bread is? This is something that's becoming extinct. And what it actually is, is the crackling of the pork. You make it nice and crispy. I put garlic and I put fennel seed in this. And this is my dough that I made. And we're going to have chicle bread tonight. I'm going to just show you. I couldn't show you ahead of time how I fried all this up, threw all, all the fat. It's just like bacon. And where do you get that, Gina? Sometimes they have it in the market. It's just the ends of the pork. Fat of the pork, that's what it actually is. Okay, now I'm going to spread this around. This is all done, it's all cooked. So, this is my dough I made. I split it in half, just like you would do a pizza. You spread it on the floor, just like a pizza. There's enough here to make two nice chicle breads. Can't wait. It is, it's so delicious. Wait till you smell it. Oh. Is the oven on, Jean? Yeah, I put the oven on. I put the oven on 425. Some shredded uh, cheddar cheese. And you can put provolone, whatever you want. And I'm just going to sprinkle this over it just to give it more flavor, but you don't really have to. But this would. I like it with the cheese. Too. You do? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I never tasted it with cheese before. But now I'll show you the next step, okay? You roll it like this. Like a jelly roll, like this. All right? I'm gonna roll this one. Oh, stuck together. Now you can see what I'm doing. I'm rolling it like a jelly roll, right? And the cheek goes inside. And you roll it all around. You grease that. Yeah, yeah, I greased I greased it with olive oil. Now see, I'm gonna just attach these two. Right? Perfect. And nice. these are going to make two beautiful. Now, I need a scissor, Joe. Yeah. Now, do I know if it's in here or not? Yes, it is. Okay. And then when, what you do is you make like little, you make little cuts on it. Okay. And I'm going to put this right in the oven. And this is going to be served with Jilda's Rajols. Okay, it's right in the oven. I have the temperature on 425. For how long, Jean? When it's done. Oh, when it's it's done. done. She never gives a time. Okay, I'm going to put it right in the oven now, okay? Oh, all right. Okay, it's on the oven. All right, now we're going to twist it. All right, now you can. Oh, we're going to do Tony's routine. Yeah, we're going to do the routine. All right, put your so Okay, over there. Right, we have to show you this. Up. And when they speak, I guess you could follow in on them, okay? Yeah. That way they'll be in the thing. Now, wait till you see this. That you know, is like amazing. I'm telling you, Tony Monty. He Tony got these Monty. seeds from Naples. They call this zucchero. Napolitano, I think. Yeah, Napolitano. He Naples. gave me this. This was one of his smaller ones. It's beautiful. I can't wait to cook it. See the outside of it? When Tony does things, he does them. Go ahead. Go ahead. When Tony does things, he does them big. He gave me a whole container of these bay leaves. Yeah. Wow. They smell beautiful. I have a whole container of these. Mm. And, so, and I put so them big. in my closet, you know. They're mm. supposed to keep, like, 
Mm -hmm. Keep it nice and fresh and everything. But that's Tony Monty's face. Oh. All right? Baby. All right. All right. We're, we're ready? ready? Okay. We're ready. Hi. Here I am, and I'm going to make my virtual. I did buy a tuck round. Uh, the first one I bought, I asked the man for the virgil meat, but it was too thick, so I bought this instead. It's it's thinner, it's easier to cook, and uh, you'll see how delicious this is going to be. The first thing I do is I sprinkle very little salt, not a lot of salt. This happens to be kosher salt. I use the kosher salt. It is saltier than regular salt. Now I have my pepper. And I am sprinkling pepper on here. Okay. Gee, this doesn't come out a lot. Like no, it know. doesn't come out a lot. Yeah, but it's enough. But it's, people, it's enough. People it's enough. like really hot, they can use pepper flakes, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Flakes. Or I had the little mill that really breaks yeah. up, breaks it up. This I did today. This is my garlic. Okay. I put garlic in and I chopped this all up. This is all fresh garlic. I chopped it up and you now sure I'm gonna... it's fresh. <laughs> Jeannie, would I put stale? No. No. <laughs> it's not fresh. the one in that jar. That's terrible. No, no, this is not in the jar. This is fresh, 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 fresh. And no garlic. There you go. Powder. Now, now I have this wonderful parsley that I chopped up and I made sure I did enough because I did my gravy with this too. So I sprinkle a little bit of this on, okay? Nice fresh parsley. Maybe it looks like a lot to you, or maybe it looks not a lot. But anyway, this is what I do. This is what I do. Now, the next thing I do is I have the Pecorino Romano Bolli cheese. <laughs> this is my Bolli cheese, from and this Tedesco's. is a little bit from Tedesco's, right? Yes. Jenny, we went the other day. Yeah. And this is saltier. It is and saltier than the yeah. regular, I have to say that. And That's why I yeah. didn't use a lot of salt, because most of us, as you know, cannot use a lot of salt. It's not good for you. So we get enough salt in all the pre prepared foods. Now I am doing this, and I'm putting a lot, because I like it. I do like Jeannie does. I put a lot because I like it. That's right. <laughs> okay. There you go. That's done. Now, the next thing I do, I have provolone here. I have provolone, and I am placing it here. Oh. That's the next thing I do. This is the shop, and um, I place it on like this, like so, and I might put another piece too. Okay, this one looks like it needs it. That's much better than the restaurant one. Okay, now I have this gorgeous, Gorgeous, gorgeous. I folded it up because I knew I was going to just place it on. This is How Italian much? ham. Oh, it's not the Palma. No, we didn't get the Palma. I think it was. No, I don't think so. But this was what? $18 a pound? $18, uh, $19, $19 a, pound. a pound. I think it's Palma. You think it's Palma? <laughs> it, is, it is the best. But anyway, here I go. And I'm just laying it on. It's really not hard to do. You know what it is? It's the ingredients. That's what it is. I have some more. As long as I have more in here, I'm going to put it. I am, and I'm rolling them. Look it. It's so wonderful. I mean, it just rolls so perfect. Look at that. And then I grab my toothpick, and I want to push that in a little bit, and I just put it through like that. There you go. You just grab the end. So give it a little squeeze, you know, and then just keep rolling it. And if it rolls out like that, you push it in. Roll it, push it tight together, grab your toothpick, and in you go, like that. And that's what you do. My olive oil, I use olive oil always. And I'm placing them in here. They're going to go on the stove. And they're gonna, I'm going to brown them on all sides. And then I am going to put them in marinara sauce. Okay? Okay, I'm going to do this peasant dish. It was from my Sicilian grandmother's recipe. And it's so delicious. I have a side dish also. They call it peas, potatoes, and onions. First, I already microwaved a couple of cubes. I already microwaved my uh, potatoes. I'm going to throw those in. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle some salt. And I'm going to fry these until they get nice and crispy. And then I'm going to add my onions that I microwaved too. And that'll get nice and crispy. And I'll show you what else I'm going to do after that. Okay, this is the 
the arugula. We're doing arugula, fresh fig salad with Italian ham. It's mm -hmm. like to die for. Mm -hmm. And figs. Yes. And this arugula comes from Lucy's garden. Oh, my is friend, that right? Lucy gave oh. me this. Look at this arugula, isn't it? I'm breaking oh, it up I can a little smell bit. it. Oh. Okay, now, Jill, did you cut those things? All right, I'm not cutting, Jeannie. I'm cut looking at all. you. Cut all now, the things. Where you now, the fresh fish. See the I went to my son's yard, and I picked them out of his garden, out of his fig tree. He doesn't even know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to see them missing. Eddie, I got your figs over here. Look at <laughs> how beautiful. Now, what I'm doing is I'm cutting them in half, and we're going to put them on the salad. I'm cutting the figs and look at them. They're absolutely beautiful. And Jeannie got them from her son's yard. He has a fig tree. They are absolutely beautiful. And I'm just slicing them in half and we're going to add it to the arugula salad with the Italian ham. Just wonderful. All around, right? Jean, how can you tell them they're right? Well, you don't want them too mushy and soft, and you don't want them too hard, so they're going to just be just right to the touch. Delicious brazil, all made, all uh, cooked on the outside, all nice and brown. I'm just going to add a little bit of wine. This is a little bit of wine I had at home. I'm just going to add a little bit, put it in there, let it absorb the olive oil, so there's no fat on the top row. And I'm done, and I'm done. I put it into the gravy that I made. Well, it's a marinara sauce. Garlic, parsley, basil, uh, and uh, I used uh, naturally olive oil and a can of uh, Pasina crushed tomato that I put in the blender because uh, I don't like the seeds and all that stuff. And so I put it in the blender so it comes nice and smooth. And I am going to drop these in the gravy in the marinara sauce, and that's it. And then I'm going to cook some macaroni, and the name of it is bucatini. Bucatini, I love to say it. Okay, I'm done. And this is balsamic glaze, they call it, and you can get this in the market. And I'm just going to pour, it's very thick, so it doesn't need a lot. I'm just going to pour a little bit just to give it flavor all around. See how beautiful it looks? And then I'm going to put my Italian ham all over this. Now, this is a real good Palma prosciutto from Tedesco's. And they slice it so thin, it's so hard for me to get a pot. A pot. Okay? It looks delicious. Doesn't this look delicious? Oh, oh, slide it over the plate. Oh, oh, that I can't wait. Can you girls wait? Oh, no. no. Okay. It's have to get nice and brown a little bit. And I microwave my onions, too. So now I'm going to add my onions after I ground the potatoes. And these will cook a little bit more. And then all I have to do is add my peas, and it's all done. I put salt and pepper. And these are going to get nice and crispy, and I'll show you what, what the next step is. As you can see, I saute my onions in here, too. They're all cooked, they're nice and brown. The last thing you do is throw in the peas. These are frozen peas, but I have thawed them out anyway. And I'm going to just mix it up and shut off the heat, take it from the heat, and put the color on, and they'll finish cooking like that with the heat. This makes a wonderful dish, okay? Imagine that with this spicy dish. It has This is puff pastry that I bought. It's so simple, so you don't even have to make the dough. You can use your own dough if you want. Now, this is thawed out, and we're just going to do one. And I have to put some flour on this board because I'm going to open it up, and I'll show you just what I'm going to do. Put a little more flour, and I'm going to roll it out nice and thin, like this. Baco C. Oh, yeah. Baco C. Baco C. I hear you laughing, Sam. These are anisette twists. So, Jill, to get that brush, this is real Sambuca. If you want to use the flavored one, you mix it with water. Now, you brush that, Jilda. All right, Jeannie. I'm listening. Brush it fast. Brush it fast. Now, you'll get the innocent flavor. I used to be a painter. See how nice yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, make sure we cover everything. Do those. What I did is I sprinkled some sesame seeds, I sprinkled some anise seed, and I sprinkled some sugar. And I'm going to roll this in. Oh, I can see the nice. Now, I'll show you what the next step is. You fold it like a book. You go like this, and then you go like this. And now, I'm going to put more flour on my board. It's getting sticky. Okay, put a little more flour. Now, Julie, you're going to, this is my parchment paper. You need parchment paper, and, you, and you're going to put it on a high, high oven. So now I'm going to sprinkle more. Oh, you sprinkle. Excuse me. <laughs> more sesame seeds. There you go. I thought you were all done. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. But they taste this delicious way. toasted. She called me this morning. You're not mm -hmm. Yes. And sprinkle some more sugar. So now I'm going to roll this in, all these seeds in, like this, both ways. Now, Jill, this is your job. Get a knife. I'll show you what I'm doing. See how it's rolled out nice See, and thin? Good job. That's your job. All right, what job? What, this one good? Or this this one? one. This one. All right. Now yeah. I'm going to make strips. Now. Wait a minute. Now you twist them. Oops. Like this. You go like this. Yeah. And you twist them around and you join them and you put them on the parchment paper. I mean, you can shut it off if you want. Just show how I'm doing the strips. Yeah, you don't need to watch them. Now I'm going to put these in the oven, and the temperature will be 375 for 10 minutes on the top shelf because I don't want them to burn. And then I'll show you how we dip them in chocolate, too. Okay, now I'm going to melt this chocolate in the microwave. You need a stoneware bowl, number one. You don't overcook it, whatever you do. The, the, Things will, I'll show you, the, the, the chocolate bits will still be a little, not all completely melted, but the heat from the microwave, from the stoneware bowl will melt them. So I'm going to put it in 40 seconds, that's it. Okay, they're not all melted, and these are semi-sweet uh, dark chocolate chips. And I, I'm going to finish melting them with the heat from the stoneware bowl, because you don't want to, if you overcook them, you'll never get them soft again. So now we're going to dip. Came perfect. Yeah. Didn't it come nice? Yeah. Came beautiful. See, they're all melted. They finished melting themselves. So now what you do is you get one end. These are so hot, they just came out of the oven. And you dip them like this. And that's that's how you make them. But you, you can wait till they cool off. I'm just doing it because we just took them out of the oven and we're in a hurry. Okay? Oh, you want to put them on there, Jeannie, rather than in the dish? Well, we'll put them in the dish, yeah. See how fast they turn underneath? Yes. And I put them on the top shelf. Because the sugar burns. See? They were burning. Oh, well, not too bad. Yeah, but you don't want them to burn. Aren't they? They're so well, the hot. they can place them on the parchment paper? You what? What would happen if you replace the chocolate? She said they No, now. Oh, you can put them back on and put them back. Yeah. Well, now we can throw the paper away after the yeah. yeah. I'm just putting them over here because I like Okay, here we are with all our delicious food we made. And our friends. And our friends, and we're going to eat it all. Yep. And we have our chico bread, our... Uh, Figs with the arugula and Italian ham, peas, potatoes, and mushrooms, the brajol with uh, Italian ham, and the piccotini macaroni with uh, marinara sauce. And the cookies. And the cookies. And, and delicious. that twist. All right, and we're going to say ciao. 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 Till ciao. next time. Bon Salut. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. Mm -hmm. That's French. Uh -huh. That's Julia. That's too big. Okay? You done? Oh, I hope you're done. Are you guys Show me Come on, get tight.
because uh, this is like, everybody knows, um, almost everybody knows how to make pasta flazzolo, but some people don't. And it's a quick, quick dish, and it's like in a half hour you're done. So it's a great thing for your family. But I just want to show you, these are the main important ingredients. This is the end of a palm of prosciutto. I use Italian ham ends or something like this. And if you can't find this, you can use pancetta. These are the three main ingredients to make a real delicious pasta basil with olive oil. So I'm going to pour some of this olive oil in my pan. This is what you do. About two tablespoons is fine. Okay. Now, like I said, you can use pancetta, but this is palma prosciutto. I got this at Tedesco's, and it gives such a flavor. So I'm going to slice this up chop it up and I'm going to put this in my pan. Chop it up in little pieces like this. Or you could use a scissor and cut it. It's a lot easier sometimes. See how easy that is? I use a scissor for a lot of things. And you see that there's not that much fat in here but you just have enough to give it a little flavor. Now, I'm going to put some sliced onion. About a half of an onion. And slice it in pieces. I don't want any onion skin on there. And I'm going to put this in there. Take this onion skin off. Okay. That's my onions. So I'm going to put that in there. The last thing I'm going to do is put some smashed fresh garlic. And when you smash it, the flavor comes, nice garlic juice flavor comes out of it, so it's important that you smash it. About three or four cloves. And I'm going to bring this over to the stove, and I'm going to saute it and brown it, and wait till you see, I'm telling you the smell will drive you crazy. It's so good. So good. Okay, as you can see, this has been sautéing for a few minutes, a couple of minutes, until you see everything turning almost like a light golden brown. The smell is unbelievable. But now to get this flavor into all your pasta fazool, I add a little bit of water and just let it simmer for about a minute. And if you can see the flavor's gone through it, you see it turn light, light golden brown. That's all the flavor. Okay, now you cool this off a little bit, and then you put it in your blender. So this is going to puree until you you won't see big chunks of anything anymore, but you get the full flavor of everything. So that's what I'm going to do. So you can still see the steam; it's still a little warm. Now I'm going to blend this. Well, now this is all blended and you've got all your flavor in there. Now I'm going to put a little more water in here. I'm going to salt my egg and I can add this water right to it. Okay, now I'm going to go right to the stove. Take this to the stove and I'm going to put, oh, all right, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm going to put a can of beans. You can make your own beans. The uh, kidney beans tend to be a little sweeter. You can put cannellini beans, chickpeas, actually garbanzo beans, or you could put red kidney beans. So 
today I'm doing it with red kidney beans. Okay, okay now I put the beans in here, and I'm going to pour about a half a can of tomatoes, the large can of tomatoes. That's all you need is a half a can. You can put less if you want. And I'm going to add a couple of basil leaves, like that. And I'm going to add more water because I'm going to cook my pasta right in with these beans. And then it's going to be all done. So I'm going to add, let me see, maybe around three cups of water. And that's it. When it comes to a boil, I'm going to throw my pasta in there and it'll be all done. You, you don't overcook them because the heat finishes to cook your pasta and you don't want it to come too soft, okay? Okay, okay now I'm going to use pecolino. This is a new, um, that means small, mini favelli, bow ties. You can use elbows, you can use uh, egg, uh, pasta whatever you want, but half a pound is plenty. You don't put a whole pound in. So it's my, uh, it's boiling right here. And I'm gonna, okay, like I said, a half a pound is plenty. Just a little bit more. Now this is gonna cook in its own juice. Its own, uh, not juice, but its own water. And you don't have to cook it long, the pasta, and I throw in, a nice portion of Pecorino Romano cheese. And now I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to take it away from the heat. And this will finish swelling and cooking with just the heat that it is. You can put a cover on it because then it will overcook. So it's all done. See? It's all done. And it's beautiful and it will taste delicious. And it's not $7 a bowl like you have to pay in a restaurant. Okay, now I'm going to show you how you can make a delicious garlic bread. I bought this at the baker today, bakery, and it was a round loaf, and she sliced it for me. And this is going to be the filling for the garlic. I put some butter. I crushed my own fresh garlic. I'm going to put a nice portion of olive oil, right? And I'm going to start mixing this together, mashing it together. Okay, now I'm steaming all this up, right? Now the next step I'm going to do is put a nice fistful of Pecorino Romano cheese. Now you don't want the fine one, you like coarse because the fine one reminds me of sawdust. That's just what it reminds me of. And this, you get such a better flavor. And boy, will this make a delicious garlic bread. See how nice and creamy it looks? Okay, now I'm going to spread a little bit on each side, on one side, like that. And then I put this in the oven. You put it in just before you serve your meal or your antipasto. And it's going to take about 20 minutes on a 350 oven. You don't want to overcook it, a brown and burn it, but you want it nice and toasty too, okay? I'm going to put it in the oven now. Okay, now if you want, like when it's a holiday or something and you're doing too many things at once, you can wrap it in aluminum foil after you put the garlic, before you cook it, put it in your freezer. And then the day, like Thanksgiving Day or Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, you take it out, thaw it out a little, and then you cook it and bake it in your oven. And it's easier that way too because it's prepared ahead of time. And look how delicious it is. It cooked in five minutes itself after I shut the heat off and it's ready to be served. Look at it. It's so delicious. You can smell it. And